Welcome to the office. Hi, Lori. Hello. Welcome to the office. Yep. What brings you to the office? How can I help you? <sighs> I've been in pain for 24 years. I had a wreck. You've been in pain for 24 uh -huh. years? Yes. Okay. What happened? I had a wreck and I hit the steering wheel and it broke my fourth rib on the left side. 24 years ago, you were in a car accident. Yes. You broke your fourth rib on the left side. Yes. In the front. In the front. Okay. Please continue. And it hurts all the way around to the back, to the T4. That's where I have all my problems. Okay. Hurts. And it gives me anxiety and it hurts constantly and my neck hurts. And so the number one reason you're here is that T4. That, yes. that the rib pain. Yes. And it starts in the front and it goes around to yes. the back. Yes, it mainly hurts in the back. Every once in a while it'll hurt in the front. Okay. Every but, day? Yes. Uh, constant? Well, sometimes it'll ease up. And, okay. But mainly it's constant. What allows it to ease up? So like what gives you, can you find a position of relief or do you have to take something? Um, do an activity, some sort of therapy? No, it just, when I get up in the morning, it's not hurting. Okay. But after I get going and doing my stuff, it starts hurting. You're working right now? No, I stay home. Mom. What else is going on besides this T4? Um, my neck. It's a, I have TMJ. Okay. And it hurts up here and the C7 and then my hips. How do you know C7? It's the other chiropractors. Okay, so you've been to other people yes. before. We'll get to that in a minute. Mm -hmm. Number one, T4. Rib pain starts in the back. Yes. You occasionally get it in the yes. front. You're getting TMJ on the left side. Yeah. Right, right side. side. Right side TMJ. Mm -hmm. How long ago did this start? Uh, 2008. 2008. What happened in 2008? I had a tooth pulled, and ever since then, it's been hurting. Okay. And um, when I was 15, I was thrown from a horse and landed on my right hip. The horse threw you, hopefully, yes. not somebody else on the horse. No, it was oh. a horse. Okay. <laughs> And you landed on that hip. Yes, the right uh, hip. The right hip. Okay, now this all kind of makes yeah. sense in terms of what yeah. we're seeing. And I think it was 2010 or 11, I fell on my tailbone and I'm pretty sure I broke it. I didn't go to the doctor, but I hurt for six weeks after that. Okay. Extreme pain. Okay. And that was when? The tailbone. It's about 2010, 2011. 2010. Somewhere around there, I can't remember. Now, with everything that's happened, Mm -hmm. What are you going through right now? I'm always in pain. And it, when the T4 hurts in the back, it makes me kind of weak and dizzy. And weak? Yeah. Kinda. Weak meaning how? I, I don't know. Just, like low energy weak? Yeah, kind of. You get a little tired? Yeah. Okay. Uh, then, do your extremity, do you get cold around that time no. too? No. Yeah, I get hot. You get hot. Yeah. Okay. All right. And what do you do at that moment? I just... Let it pass. Let it pass. How yeah. long does it take to pass? Um, sometimes an hour or two, maybe. Okay. Maybe at that, yeah. Okay. And then comes back again later? Yes. And so like how and many? if I lift something heavy, that hurts for several hours afterwards. The upper back? Yes. The okay. Upper. How's the low back doing? Uh, it's not as painful. It's, I notice when I sit for a long period of time, my tailbone hurts. Long period of time, meaning what? 15 minutes, half an hour, uh, probably, one hour? Probably half hour. Half hour, and yeah. you start to feel it in the yeah. tailbone. Okay. Get up, move around. Yeah. Deal yeah. with it. Yeah, it eases up. Then. Okay. And you said you've seen some people for this stuff. Yes, I've been seeing chiropractors for 12 years. 12 years. Mm -hmm. But this in original injury was 24 years mm -hmm. ago. So what happened 24 okay. years ago? What did you do for it? Nothing. Well, I went to the doctor, and he x-rayed me, and that's when I found out I had a broken rib. And they said there's nothing you can do. So then um, around 2008, I started going to a chiropractor because so I got headaches really bad, really bad tension headaches. Okay. I had them 24 7 for six months. Okay. Was, really was there bad. a trigger for it? <sighs> I think when I was doing the P90X, I did a certain move mm -hmm. and it, I felt something move right here. And that's when the headache started. Okay. Six months, you let it go. Yeah. And then you saw somebody yeah. for it. You got some help for it. Yes. Okay. And it eased up, but it's not normal. I guess that's 
Hold on. So it eased up, but there's residual there? Yes. Okay, residual meaning you're still feeling residual every day? or Yeah, I still feel something in there. But I'm not having the headaches. So neck tension without the headache? Yes. Okay, I got that. What else? <sighs> hmm. Or is that a good start? That's a good start, but also my... I used to spring this ankle all the time when I was little, and I have to constantly pop it. It's right in here, so. Okay, we'll take a look at the ankle. Cool. All right, so we got some stuff to talk about. We got some stuff to evaluate. Um, we have the T4 rib, mid back, yes. neck, shoulder, mm -hmm. uh, right ankle. Yes. In terms of tailbone as well. Yes. Is and there any specific back pain? Uh, just. T4s hurts. <laughs> low back, I mean. Low oh, back. low back. Any specific um, low back stuff that's going on? It's just, there? you know, in my sacrum area, it's just tailbone. Okay. It hurts every once in a while. It's and not who? bad. I can tolerate it. Okay. Now, along the way, if you're uncomfortable, tell me to stop. Okay. If you have a question, you ask. Okay. All right? Otherwise, I keep going with you. All right. That's okay. Good. Let's get started then. All right. Let's, let's get to it. Start over here. We want to watch the walk first. And the first thing we want to do is let's evaluate how her posture is, how she just kind of stands there. And what do we see? We can see a lot of this upper body is behind the foundation. So a lot of these muscles here are working off balance. You can see the right shoulder is slightly higher than the left. You can see a lot of swelling. This is all, I'm holding mm -hmm. here, is that okay? That's fine. Yeah? Just okay. Get this is all swelling in the sacrum. And I've noticed too when I stand, yes, ma'am. My, I go that way the, the, to the left. Okay. My well, hips. I'm glad you noticed it because we're going to see it. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> now, and you've been doing that for a while, right? Yes. Okay. Swelling. Uh -huh. Swelling edema. Now, as we go bend forward just a little bit, that's it. That's it. So just the bend. Look, she's tilting to that right side. So if she's saying she goes to the left is what she feels, then we have a lot of compensation going up on the top here. Next thing I want to do is let's go sit and look straight ahead, please. Let's look at the ears. Take a step forward. Now, I'd like you to actually march in place. Straight, look straight ahead. Keep marching. I'm right behind you. Close your eyes. Keep marching. Nod your head up and down three times. One, two, three. Keep marching, stop nodding. Keep your eyes closed, stop marching. Okay, looks. Let's try that one more time. Okay, please follow the instruction. Okay. Don't add, um, any, don't add any variables. No, 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 I'm checking your upper cervical okay. right now, ma'am. I'm okay. right here with you, okay? I'll stand in front of you then, so it's easier. Let's march in place, march in place. Okay, close your eyes, nod your head. Stop marching. Nod your head with your eyes closed up and down. And I want you to stop where you feel your head is level with the horizon, where you're level. And then stop, open your eyes. And you can see this anterior on the left side. So it's slightly up and turned. Okay, now you get to walk. Yeah. You ready to do the walk? Sure. You coming from where? Haskell. Haskell, Oklahoma. <laughs> Let's walk it out. Let's see what we got. And you're going to walk several, Haskell, keep walking several times. Now, this is your normal walk, is that correct? I believe so. Okay, <laughs> keep walking. She walks on the outside of her back left heel. Yes. So like she's that. kind of swaying yes. to that left side like she was saying. Now, it's this is her walk. So we don't have this movement. This is a new walk, ma'am. I don't have a name yet for this. <laughs> So we have the normal pelvic uh, movement is this way, or the SI joint. And then you hear me talk about the wiggle, mm -hmm. right? But your walk is actually different. Your walk is this. Swaying? Side, side sway. So this is her walk here. I want you to focus on that walk. Okay. Now stop there in the middle, march in place. Take a step forward, please, march in place. And we can start at her feet and scan up. So now it's both heels. Now you're favoring the back yeah, right, right heel. Both popping. <laughs> yep. We have posterior rotation of the left tibia. 
close your eyes, keep marching, and let's see what happens. Now you can see, watch her feet. So she wants to go left, her body is catching because she's been doing this for a long time. She knows how to compensate. When I was born, my feet were turned in, I had to wear braces. Both of them? Both of them. Okay, I had to wear them for, from three months to seven months. Were you C-section or breech? No, it was natural. Okay, so that's another piece of the puzzle. Thank you. Yeah. Come over here, have a seat. So bilateral toe in, correct? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, they were pretty much curved way back. My toe was almost touching mine. And I had to wear the little shoes with the braces. Okay. Normally when we hear that, there's normally something that's going on in the sacrum. Okay. So bilateral toe, both of them were going in? Mm -hmm. So typically when we hear that, right, or when I hear that, yeah. it is bilateral toe in, think and look at the sacrum. Okay. Bilateral toe out, think and look at the upper cervical. Okay. You got both. So we got to figure out where we're starting today. Okay. Um, okay. Any questions so far? Not so, no. Okay. We're going to go over your x-rays and then we're going to do the exam and figure out where we're going to start. Okay. Let's go over here and let's see what we find. So this is a picture in time, man. I'm going to be zooming in and out. This tells us kind of how you evolve from birth. We have 24 bones in the spine, 23 discs in between, and then we have the foundation, which is the sacrum and the mm -hmm. pelvis, which is the foundation of this 24-story building. I want to go over this x-ray first, and then we'll probably go back and forth along the way. You've heard me talk a lot about this, mm -hmm. I'm assuming, yeah? So let's go straight into what's going on with you. So first thing I noticed, yes, we had uh, we have some staples here, so we have some gallbladder. Yes, it was 2006. 2006. Now, any time someone's had gallbladder removed, in lieu of there was a s severe disease process going on, mm -hmm. it was a common surgery. Let's just remove the gallbladder. Well, what is the function of the gallbladder? The gallbladder is a storage organ, right? Mm -hmm. It stores bile. B-I-L-E, bile. Yes. Bile is produced in the liver, stored in the gallbladder, and the function of bile in these bile salts are breaking down old fats and hormones, right? Mm -hmm. And if we don't have it, then we have to kind of change our diet also. Mm -hmm. But what activates the gallbladder? That's the question. The activation of the gallbladder in digestion is from the acidity of the food or the chyme as the food leaves the stomach and enters the first part of the intestines or the duodenum, mm -hmm. that there's a certain pH that activates that release of bile. If we don't have the right pH in the stomach and the appropriate stomach acids, then we're not activating the bile to release or the gallbladder to release the bile. And over time, what happens? We get back up, mm -hmm. whether they're gallstones or, or just a sluggish gallbladder. Right, which I'm sure you went through that. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so let's look at the foundation. Let's zoom in. Let's see what we find. And as I go through this, I think a lot of it's going to make a lot of sense. Wow. Here, this is your foundation. Is it symmetrical? Yeah. No. Well, we can see what? We can see that the pelvis actually wants to go to the right. The pelvis wants to go right, but I want you to see this. There's a bend in your tailbone. Mm -hmm. I've fallen on my tailbone several times. And that's probably, um, right, you can see the bend here. Okay, mm -hmm. so the fall is something down in here in this area. But we have, we're out of balance. If we look at your SI joints, your SI joint is good in through here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's good in through here. You can see what's going on here. There's a little more wear and tear. You can see the whitening of the SI joint along mm -hmm. the border there. Do you see that? Is that the right side? This is the right okay, side. That's the side I fell on. And so you're favoring that side. Yep. And we want to look and see, do we have any leg length inequalities? You can see the obturator shapes are different. This tells us how mm -hmm. the, the pelvis is misaligned. I do want to go to the numbers of the foundation and then we'll continue. Okay. So let's go to the numbers and now it becomes apparent. We have a measured difference, three millimeters. So we actually have a slight short leg on the left yeah, side. Yeah. But here's the interesting thing. So you got two things going on now. You have a, a rotated pelvis and a rotated sacrum. Now, you were saying you were favoring to the left. Yeah. 
Okay, so let's put this together. Your pelvis actually wants to go to the right. This is what's interesting. This is what we've got to figure out with you. So let's follow the mechanics now. AS1 EX10 P3 R. Left pelvis goes up one, but then it goes out 10 okay. to the from the left out. So favoring the right. The sacrum is rotated on the right side. So here's the overall effect. Pelvis goes this way, sacrum goes that way. So the body wants to favor right, but the slight short leg wants to do what? Bring it back to, to the, the left. left. Yes, ma'am. So we need to figure out where we're going to start here. And we definitely need to deal with this rotated pelvis while you're here. Now let's go back to this and see what happened. So you do see this here. Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. From there, let's take a look at the rest of it and see. Okay, so your pelvis wants to go right, your spine wants to go left. left. And the left part of the spine is actually coming from your fifth lumbar. Okay. So the fifth yeah. lumbar, look, the body wants to tilt this way, the fifth lumbar is going off this way. I'm sure you had this adjusted over the years, yeah. I'm pretty sure. But if we don't fix the foundation down low, then let's go back. If let's say this is L5 and that's what shows up mm -hmm. and you keep adjusting that right side down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this thing is tilted on the right. So what's it going to want to do? It's going to want to compensate left. Yeah. I have some pain right there. So. At this L5? Yes. Okay. Does that make sense mechanically? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So L5, 4, 3, 2, one or two starts to come back, one goes off. From L1, five, four, three, two, sorry, L2, L1. Now, I want us to notice something here. This is the kink, right? Mm -hmm. The kink it's digestion. Is, no, the mm -hmm. kink is not the cause. Mm -hmm. The kink is a result of the... It's compensation. Yes, of the foundation. The next thing is, let's go here. From here, 1, 12, 11, 10, back to 9. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. The next one to go off from 9 is going to be 8. So your digestion stuff is actually... Starting at eight, not at six. Accept it where you find it. A couple of good falls here as well. We have a few side slips in the upper back. T1, T2, T3, T4. And that's where your yes. rib thing is. I played T4. rough. Nice little. <laughs> yes, you did, man. <laughs> okay. Now, let's go a little closer on this T4. <coughs> Let's look at T5 and T6 and T7. You can see these circles, right? Mm -hmm. They're all pretty good there. You see that? Mm -hmm. Really tiny in there. That one's big. What that's showing us, so you have a very interesting case here. Man. And your case is a T4 side slip. So you have a T4. It's gone posterior, right? inferior so it's gone back down it's gone back down and wedged on the left but it's also slipped left okay. and i have a feeling you've been getting that t4 whacked in the past yeah every time i go to car park that's what they pop but and i'm assuming is both hands on there and knife edge and just kind of pop it like this right well here's the issue with this guys and uh, it's not about one or the other it's when you get, use a general broad knife edge, we call this the knife edge contact, and you're putting it right on the sides of the bone and you're just doing this. Mm -hmm. Most of the time what pops are the rib capsules, not the actual bone, okay? The other thing is your adjustment of this T4 is very specific. Yeah. And you may have heard me talk about side slips. Mm -hmm. And I didn't actually learn side slips till I was a couple years out in practice. Um, and it's the one thing that's been overlooked. So the fix of this, all of this, T4, is the side slip, T4 PRI side slip. 
but that's secondary to the T8 L1 L2 foundation. I don't see five right now at the moment on this, uh, but let's look at the side and see what we find. This is your side profile now. And on the side profile, I talked about your posture. Mm -hmm. And the first thing is, well, I mean, we need to get it forward, okay? Yes. And you can see a lot of these muscles are working over time mm -hmm. just to hold you up in place. But let's zoom in and go a little closer. And now we can start to see stuff. There's that nub there, there's one fall, there's two, and there's the coccyx. We'll probably be dealing with your coccyx okay. later in the visits, mm -hmm. okay? Not now. And then five. There's L5, and that's the first one to come off once this is resolved. Yes? Mm -hmm. L5, and let's follow it. Four goes with it, three goes with it, two goes back even more, right? So mm -hmm. you've got a little bit of what we call the stair-stepping effect. And But the good news is it is tilted, but the discs are still good. Okay. okay? Um, this wedge shows me about 20-plus year injury. Okay. 20 plus years yeah. these discs are all good these discs are all good they're a little thinner naturally in the thoracic spine but they're good okay two three four c5 c6 so c6 looks like it's actually opening a little bit in the back here okay. that overall neck curve is what it's decent you also have hypermobility in the neck you get pops and cracks in there well no, it I can't ever get it to pop. It uses crunchy sounding. Crunchy. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see what we find there. Let's go to the flexion extension and get a couple more answers here. So when we're looking at flexion, when we go in extension, all those bones should move back. This one moves a little bit more. It probably causes you a little pinching there. But now this is going to give us a little answer. And guess what, man? The answer is not in your neck. Okay. Because look, this is pretty serious. This is why it's not popping. So typically when they go, f when we flex forward, all these bones should move. And we're looking for the one that doesn't go forward. That one may be at the base of the neck here, okay. C7. That one move, that one move, that one move, that one move, that one. You should not be getting these adjusted. Okay. They're not indicated. They're yeah. hypermobile. These are open discs at the back. An open disc at the back in the cervical and the lumbar is actually worse than having a closed disc mm -hmm. in the back, the way they misalign. It tells me there's been significant trauma there. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to this pelvis. Let me change the contrast a little bit. Now do you see it mm -hmm. down here? It's darker. And you can see yeah, it, curves. it's straight and then it bends. Yeah. All the way to there. Okay. Questions on this? No. Let's get started, man. Let's go ahead, start the spinal exam, starting at the base of the neck. Let's see what we find. Head down, please. Good. T4 gonna be a little spicy, lady. It's okay. All right. It's going to be a little spicy. C1 up top. There it is. Now, because she's had this for a while, there's obviously a lot of scar tissue as well with a broken rib or when you break anything for that matter, scoot back. The callus is there, the callus is formed. So, but I have to help you remodel it. You know that, right? Yes. Okay, T4 left, C1 left. Do 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 do. The question is, where are we starting down here? Because we have a sacrum on one side, we have a pelvis on the other, and you're way down low, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There it is, S4, maybe S5. 
there, way down in the low, low. S4, S5, T4, C1, man. Scoot forward, please. Let's go ahead and check movement of the pelvis. My fingers are right at the SI joints, medial aspect of the PSIS on the dimples. Feet together. Open and close your knees. Open and close. Good. Right side only, please. Good. There's that wiggle. Boom. Boom. I Left feel side. That. You feel it, right? Yes. Left side only, please. And there's the sacrum tinkle. So the tinkle is here on the, on yeah. the right, yes ma'am. And the pelvis there, scoot back. But where do we start? Okay, let's take our time. Let's take our time. Static palpation. As I rub my run my fingers down the spine. You can see right there, that swelling, edema. <sighs> Gets even more red there. So all that is swelling mm -hmm. right there. It's always so tight. Yes, ma'am. One, two, three. Right there. Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. Help the bottom. Okay. Head down, please. Seven, one. Two, three, four. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, that's going to be fun, lady. <laughs> let's see. All right, jokes aside, let's get a little serious. All right. overall swelling in the body. Now, let's see, S, this is L5. I mm -hmm. know it's tender, I know it's tender, yes. slowly, no rush. This is S1, tender. It's not as bad. S2, yes. S3, mm -hmm. S4, yeah. yes. S5. I think four was worse. S4. Yeah, okay. The elusive S4. Okay, ma'am? S4, T4. C1, right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't want to go harder than that. No, that's it's fine. Range Do what you can. Yeah, look up. Turn left. This mm -hmm. is isolating the lower cervical. Look down. This is isolating the upper cervical. So we are tight there, too. C1 on the left. T4, S4, that's where we're gonna start. After that, we will work on the jaw mm -hmm. and the right ankle. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, my right side of my nose is always stopped up. Why is that? I don't know. <laughs> so I'm when supposed to, you my, to check the uh, septum also? Yes, and when my, my son was a year old, he used to stand in my lap and rock, when the rocking chair, and he yeah. bust his nose on my I mean, his forehead on my nose. and He head butted you? Yes, several times. Okay, so we'll deal with all that, okay? Uh, go ahead and stand up. Walk it off a couple of times. Just loosen up. Tell me you're ready, and we'll get started. So with you, I'm going to start T4 and S4. And then we'll recheck the upper neck after. Okay. Step on the black platform. Two, three. And make sure we're getting the whole thing, please. All right. S4. Now, for S4, we have a little slight short leg. We want to get a little bit of rotation out for you as well, okay? It's bent. It's leaning on which side? Which side did we say was short? Left. Yeah, so we need to torque counterclockwise, okay? And that's oh. the home run, lady. I got you. Oh. Nice. Thank you, Shosha. Oh. Oh. Hi. Hi. How's it going? I'll have you walk it off twice, please. And as you're walking, you can tell me if anything is different already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> Feels looser. Yeah. You I'm not, I don't feel like I'm swaying as much. Check out her feet after just the sake of adjustment. Yeah, it feels the a lot right, freer. Yes, ma'am, the right one has already changed. As she's walking, it's getting better. Watch. Nice! Yay! Face down. <laughs> Face down on the gray table. Now, here's the challenge, and here's what we got to do. Let's go to the T4. And when we look at the T4 side slip, so we said T4 is a PRI. You said right rib, left rib? Left rib. Yeah. So it's doing this, okay? Here, let me show you guys what this is. T1, T2, T3, T4. So T4 has gone back. It's up on the left and turned. That's a PRI. But it's also shifted this whole bone this way. The rib attaches here. So if it's down like this, it's it's down and rotated, this rib is popped back. So she's getting a lot of muscular irritation there and she's got some, adhe some probably some adhesive capsulitis, some adhesions in there. Now, to just do this ain't gonna fix that. The fix is actually gonna be a side slip starting at the spinous on the right side, opposite torque, and then come back on that side and, and close it off. Now, that all sounds great in theory, right? Mm -hmm. Let's see if it works. Seven. One, two, three. Hmm. There's that bugger. Mm -hmm. So we're on the spinous to start. Get all that tissue out of the way. Make sure this thing's loose. And we're coming through on the, drop the shoulders down, hands down to the floor. And we want to come through this way, okay? So we're on T4 side slip spinous process on the right, opposite torque. There's mm. part one. Gotcha. Mm. You okay, ma'am? Yes. All right. Let's continue. Oh yeah, I got gotcha. you. Deep breath in, please. You ready? Let's walk it out. Walk it out several times. Walk and breathe. Okay. I ain't tripping on it. Down? Tingly. In the hands? All the way down the arms. All the way down the arms. Taking a couple of nice deep breaths. Keep going. Oh, oh, that felt differently. Check it out. We got something to compare to. Good. Let's continue. Let's walk, please. Looks like we got a little more movement in those dimples. Very nice. Feels freer. How's the upper back feeling right now? Feels good right now. Okay. Let's go back over here, have a seat. Let's continue and see. Look. You remember? Yeah, it doesn't feel as squishy. Correct. Clear. Uh, let's check here. Mm -hmm. uh, now that's just heat. Mm -hmm. Come back slowly towards me. Check it out. Number five. Nice. We didn't touch five, did we? No. S1. It's a little bit. Different. S2. No. S3. Little different. Much better. Nowhere what it was. No. Very nice. S4. That's some muy bueno. Okay. Now let's check up top and see what happened. Oh. 
I ain't touching the neck today, man. No, man. T4 and S4 were your measures for today. Let's go on your back. We're gonna do your right ankle. So I'm using a little lotion. We'll break up some scar tissue manually. We're gonna break up some of that periarticular swelling. Periarticular swelling is the swelling on, on the outside of the joint. And we're just working it back. Yeah. Always work towards the heart when you're working swelling. Five, four, breathe in. Four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, one. This is periarticular swelling. Next is going to be passive range of motion to work out the in intraarticular swelling or interarticular swelling. What's the difference between inter and intra? Uh, not for you, it's for them to answer. Uh, there it is. Four, three, two, one. That's it. Now, that's the prep. Let's go ahead and set it. You ready? Sure. AS talus, medial tilt. I'm using just some paper here. Contact is the medial aspect. Second, third digits. So the doctor's inside hand, superimposed, dorsiflex, invert, and set. Mm -hmm. She's tight. Mm -hmm. There you go. Let's do the board. That's no joke. Raise your right leg. Awesome. Sit up and turn this. Look up. Slowly open. Yeah. So it's a left AI, right EX. This is the yeah. time we're going to do the EX first. Open the jaw all the way. Close halfway and hold. Open all the way. Close halfway, hold. Lateral to medial pressure on the right side. That's part one. Part two, stabilizing the, with the condyle block, the cervical spine, open all the way, open, open. As she opens, I'm applying a little bit of pressure down, open all the way, slowly start to close. That's it. I got gotcha. you. Let's go on your back, please, over here on the gray table. Now let's test it. Over here. So you can see it deviates there. The high side is here, or at least that's what it appears to be. Now, if I push on the septum here versus here, this side moves. Mm -hmm. This side is stuck. Yeah, Philip. Yes? Yes. Okay. Now, for the Nasal septum, I'm doing the left side, okay? Chin down. I'm going, bring it all the way across. Chin down. Wow. Oh. Wow. <laughs> made my eyes water. Wow. That was your nose, man. I know. Made my eyes water. Wow, nice. Oh. Nice. Check it out. Look. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Let me get you a baby towel. And let's walk. And as you're walking, breathe. Very nice. Ah, uh, I can breathe. <laughs> Ooh, really opened it up. Yes, ma'am. Good. But people make comments that it's all BS, that nose adjustment. No, it's not. It's not, right? No. Yeah. All right, keep going. One more time, please. And then have a seat. Let's recheck, make sure everything is in place. Nothing came out. Let's rescope you. Yeah, I get a lot of comments on, the, on my nose adjustment. They all say, oh, that's not real. 
No, I can actually breathe out a right one now. Very nice. Look at her just here right now. You can see the sway back is less also. It's very nice. Head down, please. So your major was T4 and? S4. And how does the rib feel right now? I don't feel anything. Good. And then the next part is going to be the? Buff and the polish. We got to break up all that old scar tissue, ma'am, okay? Yes. She's all clear. That's a muy bueno. Very nice. Let's continue. Here's. Yes. Stand up, please. Squeeze the hand. Squeeze. Squeeze. You're strong lady. <laughs> Radial head, posterior lateral. Posterior lunate. Posterior lateral scaphoid. Squeeze. Posterior humerus. Squeeze. Posterior lateral scaphoid. That's where we're gonna start. Yes. Thank you. Any questions in anything that I mm -hmm. found today? No, not right now. Okay. Water, walking, ice is your homework. You're here for the week. Yes. Let's see how the journey goes. Okay. Thank Welcome you. to the office. Man. Thank you. Yeah.